In this session, uh, we will be dealing with the intra-embryonic mesoderm. And intra-embryonic mesoderm is a very favorite uh, question for most of the exams. And today we will be see seeing uh, the different derivatives of the intra-embryonic mesoderm with special mention to the somites. Again, a short note topic. So, till now we have seen uh, the development of the germ disc up to the third week. And we have already seen how a mesoderm, intra-embryonic mesoderm is developed. As the word implies, Intra-embryonic mesoderm means the mesoderm which is developed within the embryo. We have already seen the development of extra-embryonic mesoderm. That is something different. That is the mesoderm which is seen outside the embryo. And this is the mesoderm which is seen inside the embryo. So, I hope you all remember the germ disc like this. This is a trilamina germ disc. Trilamina means three germ layers. This is the ectoderm and uh, this is the mesoderm and this is the endoderm. This is called the trilamina germ disc and this mesoderm within the embryo is called intra-embryonic mesoderm and this is derived from the primitive strate which is there in the ectoderm. So up to this level we all know the development of intra-embryonic mesoderm. Now suppose we are going to remove this ectoderm, uh, the amniotic sac and we are just looking from above. Let's see how it will be seen. So we are removing the amniotic sac from above and we are just viewing from above. So what are the features we should be seeing? This is the precordal plate which is giving rise to the buccopharyngeal membrane and similarly at the caudal end you have the cloacal membrane and in the midline you have a cord like structure. This is called the notochord. So all these events are seen in the mesoderm. So this is called the notochord which is lying in the midline and this is actually acting as a mold on which we have the development of vertebra. And on either side of the notochord we have the mesoderm and now we will deal uh, with the segmentation of mesoderm or how the intraembryonic mesoderm is getting differentiated. So before moving on to the differentiation let's see that uh, there is a longitudinal groove. This is the longitudinal groove which is developing in the intra-embryonic mesoderm. So on either side we can see two longitudinal grooves developing in the intra-embryonic mesoderm. This longitudinal groove will divide the entire intra-embryonic mesoderm lying on either side of the notochord into three parts. So this is the first part, this is the second part and this is the third part. So on either side you have the first part, you have the second part and the third part. The first part which you see is actually lying on either side, imme immediately on either side of the notochord. If you consider this notochord as an axis of the embryo, this is just lying on either side of the notochord. So you call it as paraxial mesoderm. So this is called paraxial mesoderm. So immediately lying on either side of the notochord, that mesoderm is called paraxial. That is called paraxial mesoderm. Then we mentioned about the longitudinal groove. So this groove is actually forming the intermediate mesoderm. Intermediate mesoderm and the rest of the intraembryonic mesoderm which is lying on the lateral most aspect of the embryonic disc is called lateral plate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm. So this is paraxial mesoderm which is immediately lying on either side of the notochord. The second one is called the intermediate mesoderm that is actually along the longitudinal groove and the ext extremity that the outermost portion of the intraembryonic mesoderm is called the lateral plate mesoderm. Now let's see what is happening for each. What is happening for the paraxial, what is happening for the intermediate and what is happening for the lateral plate mesoderm. Let's see first the paraxial mesoderm. Paraxial mesoderm, suppose uh, you just imagine there is an otic vesicle on either side. Otic vesicle from which you have the development of ear. So uh, the part of the paraxial mesoderm, cephalic, cephalic to the otic vesicle is unsegmented, unsegmented and that is actually giving rise to the base of skull, base of skull and the muscles of the head. So base of skull mainly is formed by the unsegmented portion of the paraxial mesoderm. So what do you mean by the segmented portion? So the rest of the paraxial mesoderm we can see that it is already segmented. So, the, uh, so we can uh, name the paraxial mesoderm into two parts. The preotic part 
विच इज लाइंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ और सेफेलिक टू दी ओटिक वेसिकल एंड पोस्ट ओटिक पार्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड दी पोस्ट ओटिक पार्ट विच इज एक्चुअली सेगमेंटेड दैट इज लाइंग बिहाइंड दी ओटिक वेसिकल सो द पोस्ट ओटिक पार्ट एक्चुअली एक्सटेंड्स फ्रॉम द प्री कॉर्डल प्लेट अप टू दी कॉर्डल एंड एंड एस वी सी इट इज सेगमेंटेड एंड दी सेगमेंट्स आर क्यूबिकल इन शेप एंड दैट इज वॉट इज नोन एज सोमाइट्स so the development of uh, embryo is actually considered as three periods pre somite period that is before the development of somites somite period where you get the development of somites and post somite period that is after the development of period so after the development of somite so with the development of somites the uh, embryo can be actually dated before the formation of somite that is called pre somite period during the formation of somite that is a somite period and after the formation of somite that is called a post somite period so the formation of somite usually happens between 20 to 30 days of intrauterine life so the pre somite period is actually considered from 15 to 20 days and post somite period is considered after 30 days of intrauterine life this is how we classify the embryonic period pre somite period the somite period and the post somite period so we can see that uh, the paraxial mesoderm is segmented uh, in the post ortic part and up to 44 pairs of somites will be seen at the end of first month so we have seen that the trilamnar germ disc happens at the third month and uh, the somite is actually developing in the fourth month of intrauterine life so at the end of uh, first month we have 44 somites developed now let's see a bit more detail about the somites or how the somites is getting developed into different parts of the embryo when we take the somite as a cubical structure this is the dorsal part this is the ventral part this is the medial part and this is the lateral part and by a diagonal we are just dividing the somite into a dorso lateral portion and a ventro medial portion this is the ventro medial portion and this is a uh, dorso lateral position the and this dorso lateral part is further divided into a medial part and a lateral part so this is how a somite is formed so somite has got a dorso lateral and a ventro medial part this dorso lateral part is called dermomyotome and ventro medial part is called sclerotome so the ventro medial part is called sclerotome and dorso lateral part all together you call it as dermomyotome so it has got two components the dermal dermatome and the myotome so the dermatome is actually the lateral most portion and the myotome is actually the medial most portion of the dorsal lateral part so these are the three parts of a somite you have the sclerotome you have the dermatome and you have the myotome and let's see what are derived from these three portions from the sclerotome we have the development of vertebra and ribs so the vertebra and ribs are developed from the sclerotome portion of the somite then myotome will be giving rise to the skeletal muscles the tongue and the diaphragm and the dermatome will be giving rise to dermis of skin and the subcutaneous tissue so the myotome will be giving rise to skeletal muscles the tongue and the diaphragm and the lateral lateral portion of the dorsal lateral part that is the dermatome will be giving rise to dermis of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue so when you are asked to write about the somite we can say that the somite is developed uh, during uh, the 20 to 30 days of the intrauterine period and it is actually a part of paraxial mesoderm it has got a dorsal lateral portion and a ventro medial portion dorsal lateral portion is further divided into a lateral part and a medial part lateral part is called dermatome medial part is called myotome and the derivatives are sclerotome give rise to the vertebra and the ribs the myotome give rise to the skeletal muscles the tongue and the diaphragm and the dermatome give rise to the dermis of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and up to 44 somites are developed by the end of the first month of intrauterine period so that these are the derivatives of the paraxial mesoderm 
Now let's move on to the intermediate mesoderm. Intermediate mesoderm is the mesoderm which connects the paraxial with the lateral plate mesoderm. So what, what is derived from the intermediate mesoderm? So the intermediate mesoderm gives rise to two main structures. One is the kidney and the gonads. So actually the intermediate mesoderm is forming a cord from the cephalic end to the caudal end. So this cord is called nephrogenic cord nephrogenic cord and that is actually giving rise to kidney and gonads. The development of uh, kidney and gonads in detail will be dealt in the next session. Now coming to the lateral plate mesoderm. So the rest of the mesoderm which is uh, actually uh, enveloping the embryo is called the lateral plate mesoderm and it is reaching up to the extremity of the embryonic disc. And we, uh, we already know that if you take a session like this, that is a coronal session, this is how uh, the developing embryo will be looking like and this is called the notochord. You have the ectoderm here, you have the endoderm here and this is the mesodermal portion which is giving uh, div dividing into the paraxial, intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. This is the amniotic cavity and this is the yolk sac. So here you have the extra embryonic coelom and here you have the extra embryonic mesoderm. All these things we have already seen. And this is the intraembryonic mesoderm. Now what is going to happen is in this intraembryonic mesoderm that is especially in the lateral plate mesoderm many vesicles develop or cleft like spaces develop like this. Many cleft like spaces develop like this and later they coalesce to form a canal. Later they coalesce to form a canal that is called the pericardio pleuro peritoneal canal and this entire cavity is called intraembryonic coelom so we have an extra embryonic coelom outside the embryonic cavity embryonic disc and within the lateral plate mesoderm we have a cavity developed that is called the intraembryonic coelom so intraembryonic coelom is developed within the lateral plate mesoderm and at the extremity we can see that this is actually opening into the extra embryonic coelom so there is a communication between the extra embryonic coelom outside the embryonic disc with the intra embryonic coelom and the purpose is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo till the placental circulation is established in full swing so the intra embryonic coelom is seen as a inverted horseshoe shaped canal and uh, we can see that if you take a session here just take a coronal section here this is how it will be looking like this is the paraxial this is intermediate and this is a lateral plate with the intra embryonic coelom with the formation of intra embryonic coelom the lateral plate is actually split up into two parts the part which is lying closer this is the ectodermal layer and this is the endodermal layer so the lateral plate mesoderm which is lying closer to the ectoderm you call it as somatopleuric extra embryo, uh, intraembryonic mesoderm this is within the embryo so you call it as somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm which is lying closer to the endoderm you call this as splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm so the lateral plate mesoderm is actually divided into two somatopleuric this is the somatopleuric and this is the splanchnopleuric by the development of intraembryonic coelom so the part of the lateral plate mesoderm which is lying closer to the ectoderm you call it as somatopleuric and that is actually continuous with the extraembryonic mesoderm and the part of the lateral plate mesoderm which is lying closer to the endoderm that is called splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm and that is actually getting continuous with the extraembryonic mesoderm so uh, this is the intraembryonic coelom and this intraembryonic coelom is giving rise to three important sacs of the body which are the three important cavities in the body one is the pericardial cavity so somewhere here you will be getting the development of pericardial cavity then in the midway you have the pleural cavity and in the in relation with the gut you have the peritoneal cavity so the three cavities the pericardial cavity pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity which is seen within the body are derived from the intraembryonic coelom 
So, uh, with the development of the somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric layer, the somatopleuric layer of the intraembryonic mesoderm, that is of the lateral plate mesoderm, will be giving rise to the somatic layer of these cavities, somatic layer of the pericardial cavity, somatic layer of the pleural cavity, somatic layer of the peritoneal cavity. And the splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm will be giving rise to the splanchnopleuric or the visceral layer of these three cavities, the pericardial, pleural and peritoneal cavities along with the musculature and connective tissue, musculature and connective tissue of the three main systems. So which are the three main systems? The musculature of the heart, the musculature of the respiratory tube and the musculature of the GIT. So the splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm is giving rise to the visceral layer of the sacs as well as the musculature and connective tissue of the three main organs seated within these cavities. They are the musculature of the heart within the pericardial cavity, the musculature of the respiratory system within the pleural cavity and the musculature of the GIT within the peritoneal cavity. So the, these are the derivatives of the somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm. But we can see that cephalic to this region, this is called the cardiogenic area. So cephalic to this region, we can see that there is no separation because no cavity is actually passing between the lateral plate mesoderm. So this region we can consider as a region where the two layers, the somatopleuric layer and the splanchnopleuric layer are continuous. There is no separation between the two layers and this region is called septum transversum septum transversum and this septum transversum is actually giving rise to the development of diaphragm so the cephalic most region is called septum transversum which is nothing but the uh, unseparated part of the somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric layer of the intraembryonic mesoderm and that will be giving rise to the diaphragm and uh, you will be wondering why uh, you get uh, the septum transversum in the cephalomost part of the pericardial sac. The reason is with the folding of the embryo this will actually fold and uh, come and lie below the pericardial cavity that is about folding of the embryo. So uh, this is the uh, position of the septum transversum when the embryo is in the form of a disc but later when the embryo folds this will occupy the normal adult position. So these are the derivatives of the intraembryonic mesoderm. So uh, let's uh, take it into a nutshell. Uh, the intraembryonic mesoderm is divided into paraxial on either side of the notochord, intermediate then you have the lateral plate mesoderm. Paraxial mesoderm it is actually giving rise to somites. You have the pre aortic somites uh, in, uh, before uh, and the post aortic part. Actually the post aortic part is the proper somite and pre aortic part is actually the unsegmented portion. And uh, in the post aortic part uh, roughly uh, up to the first five occipital somites are actually giving rise to the skull, you know, the, skull the skeleton of the skull. And the rest of the somites we have already seen it is divided into uh, dorsolateral and ventromedial and the three components are sclerotome, myotome and dermatome. Sclerotome give rise to the vertebra, myotome to the muscles and dermatome to the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue. The intermediate mesoderm is actually giving rise to the kidney and the gonads and lateral plate mesoderm it is further divided into somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric layer by the formation of intraembryonic coelom and intraembryonic coelom is the main cavity within the embryo, embryo and that is actually forming the three main cavities the pericardial cavity, pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity and uh, the splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm is giving rise to the muscle of the three main organs seated within the cavity that is the musculature of the heart, musculature of the respiratory tube and musculature of the GIT. Hope uh, you had an idea about the intraembryonic mesoderm. Thank you.